Good evening. Welcome to Community and Technology, where we connect the global community with news, information, resources that we hope will help improve your life. I'm Stu Reed. I'm here with my co-host, Dave Burstein. Hey, Dave. <laughs> and today we've got a very special guest, uh, Bruce Kushnick. He's been a telecom analyst for 38 years. And it seems that his work is now culminating with the regulators versus the FCC, a legal challenge uh, taken against the FCC by a remarkable team of experts, forensic auditors, insiders, and lawyers, for which Bruce is a key player. Bruce and the team have been working since 2010 to uncover what he calls an accounting scandal in telecom that has implications for the digital divide and beyond, including a recent court ruling in March by the DC Court of Appeals that declared that states have, are independent and did not have to follow FCC rules. But he'll fill you in on that. Bruce, or his friends like to call him Kush, welcome <laughs> to Community and Technology. Thanks, Stu. It's great seeing you guys. Yeah. I look, I look forward to telling the story. Um, so, I've, yeah, I've been an analyst for, for longer than I, can, uh, than I like, but that's okay. Um, mm -hmm. We, we started uh, the, the regulators basically uh, because we felt that the – what had happened was we uncovered a whole bunch of issues that we couldn't understand dealing with the accounting uh, of, in New York State. Verizon New York publishes an annual report, and it's the only state that does that. This was in 2010 where a group of us started looking at the numbers going, these don't make any sense. Um, in 2015, you should know that that data was used to start an investigation of Verizon New York, which ended up – uh, getting about three to five hundred million dollars estimated in uh, uh, a win, which was we got thirty two thousand lines of fiber that were going to be installed upstate New York, and uh, we also had uh, the copper networks to be replaced uh, in areas that were basically where the fiber hadn't shown up. Um, however, by the 2015, a group of us under, uh, sort of didn't understand all the numbers, but we finally got an expert, uh, named Paul Harbin, who was at the FCC, and. We filed 18 times with the FCC to fix their numbers. Briefly, what happened was the number, the accounting rules that are used by the, the state. So let me start again. Verizon New York is the state utility, public utility. It has been the public utility forever, and essentially it was before called New York Telephone. That utility is still in place. It still has regulated services, and they don't necessarily mention that there is a state utility in New York. Five, and so what we found was the state utility uses the accounting uh, rules from the FCC, which have become deformed. They were set for the year 2000 and never changed for 20 years. Uh, best ex two examples, uh, the corporate operations expense, which is the corporate uh, Sorry? No. The corporate operations expense, which is the, the, the expense for lawyers and uh, lobbyists and PR, Local service, one category of, of, the, the, of the services that use the network, one service basically paid uh, $1.8 billion in 2017, but local service only brought in a billion dollars of revenue. Local service are the copper wires that basically are still in place, and there's at least about 2 million lines left in New York State. Now, it doesn't make any sense that, that local service would pay the majority of this, <laughs> this corporate operations expense uh, and, and lose money. And then it also paid uh, $1.2 billion in construction. Now, local service is the wires, the, corporate, the copper wires that were never replaced, and the average per year was being spent was between $75 and $100 million a year on the copper. That Bruce, meant that all the other money was going somewhere. Bruce, you're losing me, which means you're sure to be losing the audience. Let's okay. take the things that people can understand. You've been following Verizon's filing and finances for many years. What did they promise New York State? Well, this is this is a, the the accounting stuff is above and beyond what they promised. It's different. They, what they promised in New York was in the beginning of, of 1993 they promised to start rolling out fiber, and in '95 they changed the laws to basically, uh, all, but there was no real commitments to the actual number of lines that would be installed. But in 2005, they then changed the laws again to, to roll out Fios, which is a fiber optic wire, and they got rate increases. So starting in 2005, for the, quote, massive deployment of fiber optics, a large part of the state should have been completed. In New York City specifically, there is a franchise that basically said that 100% of the residential parts of the city should have been completed uh, by the year 2014. 
and 25% of the city is still not completed. So different, different uh, pr promises for different things. The accounting that I'm talking about is an overlay of overcharge. On the radio, won't make sense of the accounting because it's much too complicated to catch on the radio. So I want to go back to the things that really hit home. How sure. much do you charge New York? Sorry? How much do you believe Verizon overcharged New York? Okay. For the... Uh, for the fiber optic wires that from 2005, it was $3,000 a customer. Which is a heck and, of a lot. Yes, a heck of a lot of money. And, and How many customers? Uh, Two million now, so it was a lot of money, yes. But that was three, there was uh, four million then, so yes. Okay, now, what part of government should be doing something about this? Well, I wanna add one more thing. The accounting part actually got a billion dollars a year in overcharging above and beyond what I'm talking about. And the, and the wireless company should have paid about five to $8 billion to New York for the construction that happened that it didn't pay for. Okay. So those numbers are for 10 years would be, let's just give you the 10 years. So for 10 years, that would be $10 billion plus an additional uh, 10, uh, $15 billion for the wireless company that didn't pay. And then you have the overcharging for, for the changes in the state law, which would be, let's, let, let's call it $7 billion. Now, what part of government should be doing something about it? Should that be the city, the state, the state commission? Where at this point, at this point in time, each of these people were essentially negligent, and so each of the so we have, uh, for example, the state. The state can now go based on the regulators versus FCC. The state can go back and say we want to go after the the uh, the cross subsidies and we want to go after all the money. They can do that. They what can change the laws and go back and get the money. The attorney general can walk in and say, hi, we want to look at the accounting and we want to look at how much money was collected. And that would basically get the uh, uh, AG to be able to do this. The state legislature can call for audits immediately and have, the, uh, and have it handed by the, handled by the AG if they wanted to. And so the city of New York can also go back and file a complaint and, they, and can file a complaint saying, well, what happened in our city? Where's the rest of the fiber to Verizon and make Verizon fulfill their obligations before the, right now, by the way, the uh, franchise has uh, uh, been expired. So they can go back and just ask before they sign the franchise agreement to go back and fulfill their obligation to wire the networks. And so that would be basically, uh, <laughs> so all these gr different groups can do something. You, you, you've thrown so much at us that nobody's going to remember the details. What's the website to find some more details? Regulators.org. That should be simple enough. Spell it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it'll be a quiz. Uh, hold on a second. That's been, Irregulators, it, right, Bruce? Right, I R I R E G U U L A T O R S dot org. And we will give that. Now, a few things I should say. The city of New York, the commissioner of D O I T T. I don't know what it stands for. Stu, you know what is that? Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications. Do it. Was invited and passed, mm -hmm. and I also invited Verizon. So Verizon is more than welcome to con contradict any of these numbers. I have verified many of the numbers from Bruce over the years. I am one of the very small number of people who actually would read the Verizon filings, and they were obviously, well, I'm gonna say inappropriate but I probably should use a much stronger word. They made no sense at all. There was a lot going on there that shouldn't have happened. We got that. Now, what Verizon can afford. They just came in this morning with their financials. So let me look them up here on the computer. The uh, quarter was not so good. They only made Four point five billion dollars. Is that is that profit or is that revenue, Dave? That's profit. That's profit. That's wow. profit. Revenue is up. Uh, actually, that's profit after taxes. Hello. Uh, Dave, 
Right, like, look at the uh, operating operating revenues and expenses, and then see what the what the uh, money is before the taxes. E B I D T A. EBITDA. So, and yeah, Verizon in there, and nobody can figure out. And my friends include the top analyst on Wall Street. Nobody can figure out where Verizon is burying the money they're supposedly paying in taxes because it hasn't been going to the government. There's $20 billion plus on their balance sheet when I looked two years ago that had to do with deferred taxes and other things like that, and they refused to explain it to me. That's probably illegal. But, so. Well, Verizon New York is losing $2 billion a year for the last 10 years. It didn't pay taxes in New York. It saved uh, $900 million in, in uh, uh, benefits. Yeah, <laughs> there's a whole lot. And they pay, they pay their top people up $20, 30000000 million a year, officially, and so on. Okay. Stu, what do you think about this stuff? Well, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a little uh, amazed. Uh, Bruce just said Verizon New York is losing close to a billion dollars a year. Where, where is their profit coming from? I would think New York would be the, uh, the, the center of their revenue and by far their biggest revenue center. Uh, how, how does that work, Bruce? So Verizon, the, the, the Verizon utility, the state utility, they dump all the expenses, which creates the losses. The other parts okay. of the business, like wireless, has a 50% profit margin. Okay. Because it's not paying any of the expenses. So you're like separating out the, the wireless when you say Verizon New York is losing money. That doesn't include the wireless division. The wireless company is very profitable because they don't, they don't pay the, <laughs> they haven't paid construction in most of the states. <laughs> so if I if I understand you, Bruce, that's that's one of the that's part of the two step that Verizon does is they offload a lot of the costs that should be going to wireless to the wireline business, and then the wireline business is therefore losing money, doesn't right. pay taxes, and maybe even get some carry forward tax benefit because of the losses. And uh, in the meantime, the, the, the wireless company is the one that's making the money on somewhat on the back of the wireline company. It, it, am I reading that right? Yep. And, all, and the rate increases. So what happened was they took the, fi the budgets for the wires to Fios, and they said the fiber optic wires, and they said, we're just going to move it to the wireless company. 2010, they just did a wholesale move. Now, the Attorney General's office in New York actually found that they had taken the money for the, that was supposed to be used for customers in the wireline business and moved it to the wireless business, the hmm. construction. So it's, which is one of the things I've been talking about is the subsidies going back and forth, nobody's ever checked them. So New York is the only state that I've actually publishes them. an annual report. I've checked them. I've checked them. <laughs> and in fact, one of the things that was obvious when I checked them is it was impossible for Verizon to any meaningful sense be losing money in New York. They dominate the business connections in the richest city on earth. Mm -hmm. That is a gold mine, yeah. no matter how you think about it. They didn't <laughs> lose money. But yeah, how could they true. possibly be losing money in, in, with that venture? It doesn't make any sense. No, it's, it's games and it's ugly games. Uh, but bashing Verizon is too easy. In New York, we have some other networks that may be able to fill in. We have Time Warner Cable and Charter here. We have Cablevision in part of the Bronx, Brooklyn, and Queens. And the wireless networks have been improving at an almost unbelievable rate in the past six or seven, past six or seven years. Plus, we have some expanding community networks. Stu and I are active in the Internet Society here which actually provided some funding and support for NYC Mesh, which is available in a lot of parts of Manhattan and Brooklyn. And Stu, tell me what's available up in Harlem. Yeah, not just NYC Mesh, but uh, the Internet Society Foundation also provided funding to our Digital Divide Partners, which is an ongoing and more than 10-year-old operation uh, in Harlem that has partnered with resident associations to provide free wireless internet access. And that's, that, that's one of the big issues that, uh, that we as a digital divide partners harp on is that uh, there's a lot of talk about so-called affordable, making so broadband affordable to low-income families. And what we found is that there are so many families, 50% uh, of the nearly half a million folks that live in public housing 
are living at the poverty line, $25,000 or, or less per household. 50% of that nearly half a million people are unemployed. So to think that somehow a, a low cost offer is gonna be affordable to families that are struggling to pay the rent, to keep food on the table, to pay transportation, medical costs is ludicrous. So what we have been doing for uh, over five years now is providing free service uh, on a community basis in partnership with local community groups and resident associations, primarily in public housing. And uh, we've been looking around for support. We have uh, petitioned the city, which recently made a big announcement over the summer about setting aside some 80 or $90 million for, again, low cost or affordable broadband in public housing. And uh, we're looking and lobbying them to get some of that funding to help finance our community networks that are providing free service. Uh, you know, regard, regardless of what the telecom guys, the big guys offer in terms of their uh, low cost service, there's got to be some sort of baseline service so that folks can access education healthcare, municipal services. We believe that that should be at no cost to low-income folks. If not so let me, give you, let me give you some, uh, some things that we're doing on this very front. I was, I'm uh, in Brooklyn. My, we did a, a meeting with our, uh, our assembly member, uh, uh, Matilda Frontis, and in Brooklyn, in one of, my, one of the parts of the district, 25% of the kids can't go online. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why we are paying, so, in the United States, we're paying 10 to 20 times more than the other countries. So, for example, in, in uh, uh, I did I did a cross check, $29, 29 euros gets you in, in France and Italy the triple play. Hmm. 29 and, bucks for all of it? It's actually uh, close yeah, to whole, 35, which with wow. the current valuation of the dollar is about forty dollars, hmm. but it's still one, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, at one point eighteen, eighteen one dollar eighteen cents. Yeah, this conversion. Yeah, but let's let's stick here in New York City. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish because the thing that why is why is our pricing so high? The reason is because the companies who control the wires have been using the manipulated books to get their backhaul to have a 55 percent profit margin, i.e., it's obscene profits. So Wait the, the think of the structure, the, all the wires that are there, all those wires basically are being overcharged to the customer, are being overcharged to all competitors. And Verizon, so Verizon is this giant profit. Up on Verizon has already been done in this show. We don't have to go back there and repeat what you said 10 minutes ago. No, no, no. I'm, talk, I'm talking about lowering prices. Hmm. You know, you want to know why the prices are so high. And beating up on Verizon. But... I'm being, okay, I'll beat up on an AT&T, right? Yeah. AT &T. Well, hold on, guys. Let me just take one moment to break and let our listeners and viewers know that you're listening to Community and Technology on WHCR 90.3 FM, the voice of Harlem. I'm Stu Reed. I'm here with my co-host, Dave Burstein, and we're speaking with Bruce Kushnick, telecom analyst extraordinaire. Go ahead, Bruce. Okay, I'll take AT&T. Why not, right? No. I'll take... I'll take uh, well, Let's go there. Uh, AT&T controls 21 states. I understand. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. But we got T-Mobile as a pure wireless play, and they're highly profitable. T-Mobile and Sprint were not highly profitable. Sprint was losing money. Sprint was losing money, but T-Mobile was highly profitable. I and then when you had this, yeah, but there's the T, Sprint was renting, rent, renting the lines from Verizon, and basically they were being overcharged. Now you have to understand the one thing that's going on is it may be profitable, but the bottom line is the, the Verizon and AT&T, the people who control the infrastructure, control the price of all the wireline service, wireless service. And so unless you fix the infrastructure across subsidies, you're not going to get to a bottom line that you could lower rates. That's what's Again, holding all this up. Let me, let, me, let me just break this down just, just that one piece, to, Dave. Let, let, me, let me just break this a little piece down for our listeners who maybe don't understand some of the lingo. I think, Bruce, you're talking about the backhaul, which is what connects the wireless cell towers to the, to the various switching points and network control right. centers. That it, it, even though you're on a wireless network, you still have to use fiber or some wireline connectivity to get to all the switching points. And that, exactly. piece, that piece is called backhaul. 
And Correct. that piece of the network infrastructure is what you're saying is at play here and where all the manipulation is, is occurring. Yeah, but we can't right. explain it in the time we have on the radio because in fact, most of the backhaul in most of New York City is available from several other providers who are not Verizon. We have so much fiber and 20% of the backhaul happens to be microwave wireless. So, But they control the pricing of all of that. That's what's going on. It's a cartel to control the pricing of all of the stuff to keep the profit margins at 55%. That's above half the thing is profit. That's it. That's where it is. If you, get rid, if you change that part, you, we lower prices. And I want to change the subject because we can't provide enough facts in a short radio show to have people know whether you're right or I'm right. So let's wait, wait, no, wait, wait, we're, we're arguing about the same thing. My, I'm saying that they are price fixing the bottom line backhaul. That's what's going on. I think if they weren't price fixing, then the, the, the T-Mobile could come in for ten dollars a month for for a hundred gig, a thousand gigs, like they do uh, thirty dollars a month for uh, for a uh, thousand gigs, which Stop. is the price in Europe. Stop. We're not making sense. We're not explaining things in a way that the audience can understand. And I care about getting kids connected, not obscure bits of accounting or what happened ten years ago. We are, is it in fact to be corrected? Come back to connecting kids. How do we connect kids in New York City in 2020, which means we can't change big political things and accounting things from five years ago don't have anything to do with it. That's the question that's most important. How do we connect kids today? Dave, I, the, first thing I would, the first thing I would do is I would go to Verizon and I'd say, listen, you didn't fulfill your obligations. Give everybody free service and wire everybody. Fine. Or we'll you, give you penalties. But you, you said that for 15 years and it hasn't happened. Well, they, they, haven't, they just expired their franchise so that we have an, a, a, a leverage point. You may have a leverage point, but I don't see the city of New York or the state of New Dave, York. Dave, if, we, if everybody started rolling out wireless, it would still take years anyway because they still need a fiber optic in, infrastructure. You right. have to be wrong about it. Wait, 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 it requires fiber, right? It does. That's the bottom line to the whole thing. There's more yes, than no? fiber in place already. So the yeah. other option is to open. The other option is to find out where the dark fiber is and light it up. All of which is ab available and possible, but that isn't going to get a kid connected in December 2020. Not what's going to get connected, Dave? Go ahead, your turn. Okay, let's get back to connecting kids in December 2020. Good. Okay. We could presumably get Verizon to do more, but I haven't seen the will on the part of government to do that. So I'm not going to think that's going to happen between now and December 2020. Let's talk about how some things that can work and are working. What do you guys know about Chicago and connecting all the school kids? Well, you know, the, 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 uh, uh, a bunch of philanthropists got together and uh, raised about $25 million. And the city uh, school district matched that. So together they have a $50 million commitment to roll out over four years to provide free service to the 100,000 uh, kids in the Chicago school system. Uh, but that's a pretty good sized nut, 50 million bucks uh, over four years. Uh, the math that comes out to 10 bucks a kid per month, which is what the well, so-called uh, uh, affordable internet is. Dave, you could probably tell okay. us that the actual cost to the provider is, is way less than that. Um, so, you know, to, to, in my mind, the providers, I think it's Comcast and RCN in Chicago are still not doing any big favors to the community in terms of their participation in that plan, uh, which is led by uh, Ken Griffey Jr., the, the ball player, among others. And at and controls the, uh, the, the, local, the local infrastructure. Actually, okay, we're, we're, we're back to that again, uh, uh, Bruce. <laughs> Griffey, it's not the ball player. I'm it's sorry? An, it's an investor named Ken Griffey. It's not the really, ball player. It's, it's not related to the baseball player, really. Okay. Baseball player doesn't have enough billions to give away 10, 10 million of them. But that's uh, happening. I, I don't know that, but okay. 
Yeah, that's happening today in Chicago. That's connecting virtually every kid in Chicago without a connection. Four years, it said. Four years. Four years. More funding. No, no, yeah. no. It's connecting them now, and it goes on for the next four years covered. They've got the money in place to keep them connected for the next four years. Yeah, That's and how are they connected? They're using cell phones? Cable. Laptops? Cable. Landlines. Landlines. Only mm -hmm. cable, and part of it is enough to get them a laptop or so on. And I've got some numbers on that, but Stu, why don't you do a station ID? Well, thank you, Dave. Uh, this is WHCR 90.3 FM, the voice of Harlem. You're listening to Community and Technology with Stu Reed and Dave Burstein and our very special guest today, Bruce the Kush Kushnick, telecom uh, analyst extraordinaire, talking about his work with uh, a group called the Irregulators.org, which has been uh, waging a battle for uh, over 20 years with the FCC and uh, state and local regulators to help unearth some of the billions of dollars of profit that they have buried to uh, free up some of that money to help provide service uh, more affordably, if not free to uh, New Yorkers uh, in the city and the state. So uh, we've been talking about uh, ways to bring service to New York City schools. Uh, we just talked a little bit about uh, the Chicago uh, system where a group of philanthropists have raised about $25 million matched by the school district uh, to provide service over, I guess, a four year period free to the end user kids, 100,000. New York City has 10 times that amount of kids. They've got over a million, I think it's 1.1 million kids in New York City. So you're talking yeah, about uh, big price tag. So we're talking two thirds of them are already connected. So we're talking about a few hundred thousand that we have to find some way to come up with the money. For. Now, I'm looking, Bruce, Stu, talk a minute about what it's like for a kid in New York today who's not connected and whose school has to be remote while I look up something. Uh, well, you know, it's it, it's crazy. We, we've had a couple of shows, Bruce, just FYI. We've had a, a number of educators uh, from New York City school system on this show recently talking about the challenges of, uh, you know, remote education in, in, the, in the COVID environment. And and as as it, uh, you know, I'm not saying anything that's, that's probably not common knowledge. Uh, if you don't have both uh, a device and connectivity, a uh, rather robust connectivity at home, uh, you're up to crit. Um, you know, even before COVID, you needed connectivity to do homework, to get your assignments, uh, for parents to connect with teachers in terms of monitoring the kids. And now with COVID and remote learning and the bandwidth demands of, uh, of online learning with Zoom and the other uh, virtual platforms, uh, it's imperative that that other third, now I, I, I'd be surprised when we weren't more than that, uh, Dave, that don't have internet connectivity at home. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, 300 plus thousand kids, that's a huge population that is struggling to uh, stay afloat. And uh, a lot of these kids are already uh, challenged, economically challenged. And so they run the risk of now we're what, nine months in almost into the uh, pandemic and certainly at least six or seven months into the uh, suspension of uh, in-school learning. So these kids are falling behind and they're already having difficulty. So, you know, they'd be maybe entering the next year, uh, 2021, almost a year behind in their education. So it's a, it's a huge problem. It's, it's, it's a societal problem. And it's, I'm surely gonna have ripple effects across the culture, across the society. So it's something that, you know, we all should be working on to, to, have, to make some sort of dent in, the, in this issue. And uh, New York City is just one municipality. This issue is happening across the country as we are now in, our, in the third wave, the third surge of this virus with, uh, with the end not in sight. Now, I ran the numbers on this. How much do you think it would cost to connect 300,000 school kids with ignoring things like 
families where they're two in one. So it only needs one connection. Let's take some. Uh, how about forty million dollars a year? Yeah. Let's be generous. Let's say it would be ninety million dollars a year. Okay. Who's who's offering yeah, who, the service? Who's generous too? Who's who's okay. getting all that money? No, who's what? offering the service? Is it the cable company? Is it the yeah. phone company? Is it the wireless okay. company? I'm deliberately looking at the cable company because if they can do it in Chicago, Charter can do it here in New York. And the numbers say it is ridiculous. It hasn't happened yet. Now, let's go over those wait, numbers. Wait, wait, wait. What, what are you assigning as the value? They're going to say we want retail. They're not going to go, we're going to give it $5. And that's exactly where I'm going. Because the city of New York should do what Chicago did. And Comcast actually encouraged them to do it. Because they're good liberals. And they know it was going to help the community. And it's good PR. It doesn't cost them anything. Comcast has a program across all of Comcast, the largest cable company in, in the country. I don't know if they're still the largest, if they're currently the largest in the world, probably. Uh, to connect kids at 10 to $12 a month. You can- Yeah, for how long? As long as they're in school. Yeah, really? You think? And then they're not going to ask for the money back later or some other way? That's exactly what the program has, Comcast has had for the last five years. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And that's available. And Verizon doesn't have a program like that. They're talking. They're not delivering. Charter is not together on their program like that. Cablevision doesn't have a program like that. But if Comcast can do it, Charter can do it here in New York. Dave, yes. Dave, it doesn't solve the long-term problems. We're gonna, you, you want to do short-term? That's fine. Give them, the get, and, in Let's slow down, Bruce. I made a point of sending you ahead an outline which said we can talk about the long-term problems after this. But the key question to me and to, I think, most people listening is connecting two or 300,000 school kids who aren't connected for the next year and maybe the next four years. Now, let's, t let's put those in numbers. First, $10 a month, more than covers the cost to charter or cable vision of hooking up an additional home. Networks are expensive to build, but they've been built throughout New York City and Long Island. So they're already built and the marginal cost is somewhere between four and $7 a month. That's why Comcast can do it. Now, if our politicians had enough. The files can do it then. They will have, uh, they have wires everywhere, right? Well, they have to do is finish the job and then, give, uh, and then give cheap prices. I don't want to go to Fios because that's talking about Verizon problems and we'll talk all day about that. I want to talk right. about Verizon can do what Charter can do where they're, where they're built and they should. And there's every reason to say that they should. But I want to solve the problem. That's what I'm trying to look at. So I'm looking at what we can do now if our mayor and our governor had a little bit of, co of courage and knew what the blank they were talking about, in particular the cost. Now, how much does New York City spend per student on public schools? Either of you know the number? I, I think it's around $2,500 a student per year. Actually, it's more like 18000 Okay. But an either number, if the cost of getting a connection is $120 a year, and the cost per year of a plausible laptop is about $100 a year for two years, $60, $70 a year. That's a years. fraction. That's a fraction. Yeah. Small fraction. No, it's 200. There's a slew of decent... Uh, laptops for 180 to 250. Yeah, I'm today. saying it's a small fraction of the 18,000. And I, I dropped a zero. Oh. I think the estimate is really 20, 23 to 24 thousand dollars per student, uh, New York City Department of Education. So you're talking about, Dave, not even a thousand dollars a year per student. No, I'm talking 300 dollars a year per student. Yeah. Or less. Out of that budget. Yeah. So the so, money is 
But the problem is the political will. That's what I see. That there is no political will to really solve this problem. That's what I see as as, as the issue. And it's partly political will. It's partly ignorance, because Verizon wants to make money, so they want to charge seventy bucks. Charter. Uh, I'm sitting here with a cable connection because I can't get Verizon files. I wrote about DSL for ten years over a cable connection. Uh, and that's still, it's not a lot of money if you recognize what the real costs are, unlike what the FCC does, mm -hmm. and unlike what the companies want you to do, but exactly like Comcast is delivering today in Chicago, the money is a trivial fraction of our school budget. Yeah, We don't even need philanthropists. Mm -hmm. We just need politicians Re reallocation of existing funds i i don't think it's ignorance dave I, i'm i'm i beg to differ with you on that i think you know there are a lot of real smart folks in this town you got people like bruce that have been putting these issues forward and yourself dave been talking about the the real uh uh spiraling down of the cost of bandwidth uh you've been talking about that for years now and uh that's that that's you know the the, the policy makers got to know that I just think they don't have the guts, they don't have the wherewithal, they don't have the will, and uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if we need to light some fires or, or kick up some more fuss. I mean, I, I like what Bruce is doing in terms of the lawsuits. I mean, I think that's certainly keeping the fires, the heat, on 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 the uh, operators on one level. But we got to turn up the heat on the politicians somehow. I think those are the ones that are really. Uh, just not, not, not pulling their weight. Not that Bruce is wrong about what Verizon should be doing. That's a fight that I'm glad he's making. But solving the problems in front of us, that's the fight that I'm most concerned Dave, with. Dave, if, if, if the state wanted to, it could immediately go and say, Hi, we don't want you to go pay for, take this money and stop the cross subsidies that go to wireless and take that money and go pay start wiring the state. That's what they can do. In the four years, the four years they can make a big dent in four years or three years if they if the, if the politicians wanted to do that. It's the same thing with what you're saying. They're not going to give away the service for free and getting them to go out and give ten ten bucks a month. If that's what the cost may be, but they're not going to say that. And then we're going to want their money back. They're going to come out with some other ways of giving new fees. They will do that on wireless, which becomes the next question. Is wireless part of basic service? Wireless capacity has been exploding for since at least 2014. We now have about seven times the capacity on average we had then, and it's going to double in two, in two years. So there's a heck of a lot of wireless capacity that's already online and available. My calculation is that T-Mobile could hook up 80% of those 200,000 or 300,000 students today with the existing network. And that number is going to go up. And in fact, T-Mobile has said that they will connect 10 million students across the country at about $10. Now, problem. The capacity there in wireless is enough when I say connect 80% at 25 at the federal standard of broadband, which is 25 down and three up. Is that enough? And is that enough in the long term? Or do we have to do something better than 25 three going forward? Bruce, how fast can fiber go? One gig, two gig, three gig. The gig is easy, symmetric. Yep. How so the, problem, the problem with wireless is in the United States is that the average household is now using 400 gigs and more for a month. And so if, if you can't, you don't, they don't give that kind of service for wireless anywhere. It's usually the unlimited is 50 gigs for $90. Actually, can't, can't do it. France, so we know what's possible, and again, it's a profitable company, you have the major operators offering what amounts to 200 gig uh, for 
20, well, 25 to 35 dollars. So we know that's Ooh. possible. Yeah, they're not doing that. Yes, they are. That's yeah, no, Verizon, Verizon, Verizon is charging $90 for 50 gigs. And so that is something that is wrong in the United States, as you pointed out. But it tells me what's possible technically. And then we go to the political will. But we're going to run out of time in 10 minutes. And let's try to figure out what you really need first for a kid in school, highest priority. And then as we will pass that three years from now, five years from now, what a family really needs to be reasonably connected. Let me give you a number. The standard business quality video conference runs at 1.5 megabits. Looks pretty good at 700, as we all know. So let's say it takes a gig an hour. With 25 down, you could have three 4K, 4K videos playing down but upstream, three is a little bit of a limit. It means you're probably going to have to sacrifice, excuse me, you're going to have to sacrifice quality if you want more than two kids in different classes listening all the time. Is that an acceptable sacrifice for 2020 and 2021? Stu, why don't you, why don't you speak first and then Bruce? Well, you know, I, I can't really speak authoritatively about the bandwidth numbers, but I, I would say, I, I know you can, <laughs> I know Bruce can too, but I, I would say that, you know, given that the current environment, pandemic environment, and the bleak prospects of it really uh, abating in the near term, and I'm talking about going out two, three years, uh, I think you're looking at, at needing bandwidth in the home for two to three to four people uh, to be potentially simultaneously a video conferencing. Um, you know, if, you, if, you, if you've got multiple kids in the home, you've got working adults, don't forget the parents have the same challenges. Many of them have to work from home, have to have meetings from home. So you really need capacity for, I would say three to four simultaneous uh, video streaming uh, conferencing functions happening in, in the average home with, with kids. So that's what I think is, is the requirement going forward. And I don't think that's gonna change anytime soon. And that some families need that. And three meg up doesn't do a decent job of four connections. It's usable. It's probably, it may be what I'm using right now to talk to you. I'm not sure what my Wi-Fi is, run, it, it is connected at, but it definitely is making a compromise. So what's, Bruce, the up, what's the upstream requirement or what, what, what you would it's say say, It's safe to say a, me, a, me, a meg, one meg per stream. Okay, that gives sure. you the quality that most businesses use. Mm -hmm. uh, and remember that most kids at any given moment are listening to the other kids while listening to the teacher. So it doesn't put that much burden on the network. But it may be that instead of saying three, we need to get two times three, mm -hmm. six into homes with a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. That's all right. Now, Bruce. No, I think, this, I think we've, we've now come to the point where we suddenly realize we need more bandwidth and we have to find out what everybody's using. So surveys, no, I think, I are the next step. I don't care what everybody needs to meet their basic requirements. In other words, to go to school, to do their job online. And it happens that the download is enough. They can watch loads of TV as well. Once we get up to a, Euro, a Finnish or a French capacity of a cap that's de facto at least 100 and more like 200 gigabytes a month. There, there are 21 countries offering for 30, for 30 euros a or 1,000 or more gigs per month. So, you know, we're not even close yeah. to doing things like that. 
Well, well that, that, that's not, that, that, if I'm not mistaken, that's not a technology network design challenge. That's a political. If, what, if, if, if the only things right? are running off of fi if there's a fiber warning to the cell site, you could do what you know. You could pump a lot of more gigs, but they don't want to do that. Almost every cell site in New York. So that's already solved. And that fiber, additional bandwidth on that fiber, does not add enough costs to be interesting. So we're not, talking, we're, not talking, we're not talking about a technology challenge at all. Yeah. No, you're talking about, you're, you're talking about the backhaul being too expensive. Mm -hmm. But and that's not. A, that's a political problem. But yes. the fact, it, it, it turns out to be irrelevant because once they have the fiber in place, which T-Mobile and AT&T already have, throughout almost all of New York, certainly 70% and probably 90%. They don't release that much number. Adding more capacity on fiber in place is just not that expensive, no matter who owns it. And in New York, we actually have numerous competitive fiber providers. Uh, T-Mobile is mostly buying dark fiber at this point, which means they just have to replace the box on each end, which Bruce, you know the numbers on that as well as I do, doesn't add that much of a cost. So the capacity is there in New York City, not everywhere, but in New York City to get a heck of a lot. But that doesn't say that 25.3 is enough. Is 25.3 enough for basic requirements now, this turns out to come up in Washington as well because they're spending $8 billion to get some rural areas up to 25.3. And, <laughs> and the report says that about half of them are not, when they, when they actually did the testing, half of them aren't there. They didn't get the speed right, they, they, they couldn't get the connection. In the South on that. But that's why these are key questions, and that's why I wanted to come to these questions. Beyond the immediate connect up the kids, I don't think it makes sense to spend $10,000 to go beyond a decent connection that does most of what we need to do. Because beyond, I don't care about getting the third 4K TV. That's great if we can get it, but I certainly don't think there should be a big public subsidy for it. But and, why are there any public subsidies when we can go after the money? I'm sorry, this is my point. We don't need subsidies. We need to fix the we need to fix the money and go after them. That's yes. what my point is. Yeah, get some of that twenty billion dollars a quarter that you just talked about that Verizon is throwing off and not paying. I'm taxes. sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. You know, it's, the reason, the reason why I'm doing what we're doing is I'm not sitting around going, hey, let's worry about this. I really want to try to get the money as soon as possible. And by going after the money and taking legal actions to go after it, because it's a billion dollars a year in New York. Bruce, so if we, if, we, if we go, uh, if they want to settle next year, well, they can start wiring tomorrow and set, get settled next year. They can go in and say, hi, the, the $1.5 billion you overcharged in corporate operations. You can't do it anymore. We're going to use that money to go out and do the fiber. Duh. We're going to take the money that was going to the wireless company and give it back to where it belonged, which was the state utility to go out wired. They could start tomorrow to do the wiring if they went and, they went and stopped the, the, the cross subsidy. It's not even legal. They can do this in every state right now. Well, it's, not like it's, it's not like it's, it's, not like it's on, not on the books. I, I, have a, I have a question. Let me ask Bruce a question, uh, Dave. Ha, have you laid out this scenario, Bruce, to any of the politicians, to the AG's office? To any of we the just, se senior people in, in, in state legislature that maybe could, could could bring some action. Okay, so we we have a, we have a bill being uh, that we're working on with some of the legislators in New York to go out and get audits immediately. We are pitching the AG's office to go in into the state and, and the mayor's office and say, "Hi, we want the money back. We're doing this in five states. We're working in California. We're working in uh, uh, Colorado. We're working in Pennsylvania." working in Massachusetts. And the goal here is to basically say, all this money's on the table. We want it back immediately so we can start wiring the schools. We can start mm -hmm. wiring the kids. That's what we're doing. And so the idea that there's all these government subsidies is ridiculous. We shouldn't be giving them a cent. We should go out and find out what happened. The other thing is to light the dark fiber that's in the cities, which most people don't know is all over the place. There's about six, in California, 65% of the, of the state has fiber that was never lit. 
period. And that was those 2007. Of all the wiring that was in there, they never lit any of it. So my feeling is, is really to talk about government subsidies is a waste of time because they're going to get as much money as they can. What we should be doing is saying, no, we gave you all this money. We want, we want to have the wiring now. And they can, as I said, they can walk in tomorrow and say to the to the uh, and the government can sign this and the legislature stop all the subsidies to wireless. We want the billion dollars back today. But done. We want to put it right, and we want to get these people back to work. We can start in January or as soon as possible, just going out and set, you know getting the staff. In. They'd have to hire more people to go do the work, but they can do it. Then with the franchise in New York, I would not sign the franchise agreement because it's now expired, and I would demand that they finish the wiring. And I would demand penalties and fines, which would then basically lower the rates for the kids immediately when the thing was being built. Because you could go out and say, hi, you didn't do the work. There's penalties and fines. We want the money. Bruce? And it's $75 million, $100 million. Bruce? Right away. Boom. Bruce, we're down to two minutes. Let me go through the things that have to be said. I made a point of inviting, is it Jessica or Jennifer Tisch, who's the current head of, the, of Do It? She politely declined. I made a point, and it would have been very interesting to talk to her, her, and I suspect when she saw that you were gonna be on the show, she said, I'm not going near that because she doesn't want to touch these arguments. That's to her shame. I made a point of inviting Verizon so they could give an answer. Because I confirmed a lot of what Bruce has said, including the inappropriate accounting in New York State. They're welcome to equal time. So far, they're not willing to speak up. I think that we should go back to what worked very well, which was requiring that phone companies provide universal service. That's availability. And then require something that Comcast is doing, providing to the poor, many of the poor, especially those with kids in school, the service is something like cost. And frankly, when we get down to the cost of a marginal broadband, you could pull it out of the school's budget for accessorial charges or something. It's not very much. And Stu could talk about how we could get to most of the city housing projects for so little money, it's ridiculous it hasn't happened. Stu, am I right that most of the th problems could be solved if we had political will? I, I, I couldn't agree with you more, Dave. Uh, the money is there. The money is certainly in, in the school budget. The money is in all of the, the uh, accounting tricks that Bruce has identified with uh, uh, Verizon. I'm sure the other telecom players in the city that are playing a lot of the same tricks. The money is there. We need the political will. And I couldn't agree with you more, Dave. There should be universal broadband service and there should be free universal broadband service. Forget about that affordable broadband service. There should be free broadband service, at least baseline service to uh to folks in new york anybody but, who can't afford it that's right but we're about yeah. out of time we're, we're out of time folks so because bruce bruce any final you, any uh, final comments bruce yeah uh, just so you know the wires that are being put in are, are part of the state utility we can just take them back okay. fine files is the files wires is part of the state bruce, utility the wires to the cell phones will you please give the link yeah, the regulators.org that's irregulators. Okay. Irregulators. Irregulators.org. Okay, yeah. check it out. We've been talking with uh, Bruce Kushner. Do you support it? And help out? What's that, Sorry? Uh, Dave? If the Internet Society had an active committee that was reaching out to the politicians on these issues, would you support it and help out and provide all the data? If, if it's going after the money, yes. If it's going after getting kids wired, yes. Let's do it. Okay. Sounds good to me. Sounds, sounds like a plan. Yep. Time okay. to say goodbye? Thanks, Dave. Time to say goodbye. Okay. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thank you, Bruce. We've been talking to Bruce Kushnick, telecom analyst for 38 years and beyond. Keep up the fight, <laughs> Bruce. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Dave. You've been listening to Media yep. Technology.
on WHCR 90.3 FM, the voice of Harlem. Stay tuned next week for another show on community and technology. This is Stu Reed and Dave Burstein signing off. Thanks for tuning in.